Read them and weep, boys. I swear, you gotta be dealing off the bottom of the deck. Yeah, right. It couldn't have anything to do with... Shh. Keep it down. Did you just shush me? Look, he's asleep. He's been following us all day. Now it's our chance to beat it. Right, let's go. And you're telling me to be quiet? Where to? The dark side. Even if he wakes up, he can't follow us in there. <laughs> Something to believe in Found some truth It was deceiving So tell me what Should I put my Faith in Carried all My own burdens But I was always Hurting The pain is gone And I'll thank you Now Finally Got freedom. I've been waiting. No, oh, so that is so nice. <laughs> they didn't even want to wake me up. This day, this day, this time, this time I've been oh. Sick well, they must be going to the dark now. side. I can walk. Grace is everywhere. Enough to really care about me and all my worries. Thought about that time I left it all behind. Thank you so much for taking me away. And finally, finally, God. What? I've been staring at me for five minutes. Well, since no one's gonna mention it, I guess I will. I'm not staring at you, but I'm staring at those things. My hair? Yeah. Now that you mention it, what is that? It's dreadlocks. Well, I like your fro better. It's how they range in the islands, Mom. <laughs> what islands? Jamaica, Mom. Bob Marley, Rastafarians. <sighs> Come on. I still like your fro better. Hi, Mr. Naylor. Hello, Joseph. So, uh, how many scholarship offers have you got? Actually, I haven't got any scholarship offers per se. Uh, just interest from three different colleges. And for three different sports? Yes, sir. Um, I am blessed. And you're certainly humble. You know, my brother Denny, he actually got a football scholarship to Florida State. I read in the newspaper it's one of those provisional scholarships, and uh, he's going to have to stay healthy. Yes, sir. That's what I've been praying. But you know, Florida State has a great line. They always protect their quarterback. Hey Larry, one more. Coming right up. I gotta have dinner with my folks tonight, so let's make this the last one. Sure, no problem. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This isn't another one of your dad's retirement dinners, right? I mean, like, how long is he gonna milk that? Look, this is a big deal. This is. The first time in like over a hundred years that someone in our family hasn't been president of Mound City Bank. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to start anything. I know, it's just... Hey, is the squirt still outside? Squirt? He's as tall as us. He's still 17. He can't get in here. Which is why we come in here? And that's why we snuck out of the house while he was napping. And he still followed us here. He knew we'd be here. 
And his age is only gonna keep him out for another couple of weeks. Then he turns 18. And he follow us everywhere. Well, maybe he'll follow you, but we're gonna be in Tallahassee. So is he still out there? Yeah, yeah, he's still out there. He's talking to some old guy, probably getting another scholarship. At least I got a football scholarship. Joey has three separate sports scholarships, and he's not even a senior yet. Who knows what's gonna happen when he is. And tell us again just how many you have. <laughs> You're lucky Florida State let you in. Hey, I'm not an athlete like Joey or Denny, but at least I got in. You're stuck here working for your old man. Well, Joe, it was nice to see you. Do say hello to your brother for me, will you? Actually, sir, they're, uh, they're inside. We're supposed to have dinner with our folks tonight. So I'm just waiting for them to get back out. Do have fun. Thank you, sir. Guys, that's our sixth grade teacher, Mr. Naylor. You dunces. <laughs> in Bobo's defense, he probably spent more time in the principal's office than in Naylor's class. <laughs> no wonder he doesn't recognize him. Well, guys, here's to success. Success? Success. For what? Everything. <laughs> you better take good care of Joey, all right? Hey, watch it. I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure you heard me. It doesn't matter if I heard you. You know the squirrel will be following me around, just like he does when we're all here. You college boys are leaving the real work up to us men. If your old man didn't give you a job here, you'd be homeless. You know, you could actually go to college. I'm sure the community college still has your records. You guys ever think Joey might choose Florida State next year? You know that's one of his scholarships. I'll transfer now, shut up. <laughs> one more? Nah, I gotta get going. Yeah. Hey, we're not leaving out the front, are we? Are you kidding? We've been avoiding Joey all day. You think we're just gonna waltz right out the front door? Out the John window? You got it. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't go out the bathroom window. Hey, can we find some other way out of here? It's always the front. Well, at least let me go second. You know I'm afraid of heights. No, guys, come on, please. One of you guys can help me down and the other can steady me in. He's right. Last time was a disaster. He hung on the ledge for like 10 minutes. It wasn't 10 minutes. Maybe like eight. Big deal. I'll go first. Hey, and this time if you freeze up, maybe we can send Joey around and he can help out. You wouldn't. <laughs> Larry will send somebody to come get you out. Come on, let's go. Uh, maybe they went to the John. Just drop. Hold me. Hold me. Hey, hey. Foot. hey. Let's go. That's strange. Let's go. Hey. Hey, David. Don't run that way. You'll run right past the front. He'll see us. Oh, forget him, man. He does this all the time. Come on. Mr. Parker. Mr. Naylor. I didn't see you then. I'm sorry. Dennis? Dennis Roberts? Hey, Mr. Naylor. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. But did you know your brother's waiting for you around the corner? Really? Yes, really. Would I say that if he wasn't? Let's get out of here. Okay, now you're just trying to look like Larry. What? Because of my shirt? Yeah. 
Hawaiian shirts are Larry's thing, man. Yeah, Larry and half the old men down here in Florida. What are you, the fashion police? First you don't like my hair, and now it's my shirt. I'm not changing either. I like your fur better. Hey, let's split while Joey's in the head. No, 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 he rode with us here. My pop will get mad if we leave him stranded. Hmm. It says here that billionaire Howard Hughes is coming down to Florida to look at some land. What? Old Howard Hughes. It's, it says here that he was in Vegas for about like four years hiding out, and now he's coming here for some reason. My old man's done business with him. Your dad knows Howard Hughes? <laughs> yeah, right, and I just won 10 grand on Pyramid. <laughs> I didn't say he knew him. Sold him a car a while back, sheesh. Okay, come on, you can't kid a kidder. Let me see the article. You could have given me the whole paper. I wasn't done with it yet. No, I, I would have given it back to you. I'm not kidding. Hughes and a couple of his people were scouting out property around here last fall, just like it says in the article. Yeah, and they're about 10 years too late following the Disney people. All I can tell you is that they were looking for something. Are you sure you're not confused with Disney? You know they're building their new Disneyland by Kissimmee. No, it was after that. I know all about that. They're calling that Epcot. As for Howard Hughes, I don't know what he was doing or what came of it. Well, maybe he's going to open Howard Land so both you guys can have somewhere to play. Ha ha ha. Go ahead, laugh at me. I know my dad sold Howard Hughes Land Company, a 70 Lincoln Continental, around this time last year when the new models came out. Okay, so now we're getting the real story. It was one of Howard Hughes' companies. It wasn't even Howard Hughes. I knew it. I'm telling you, I never said he met him himself. It was one of the guys who worked for him. He said he came to the lot in the cab. My dad thought Howard Hughes was in the cab waiting for the new car. So your dad never even saw Howard Hughes? He just thought it was him? He saw the 10 grand they paid in cash. Well, either way, he didn't see him. Nobody sees him. This is it. I've got an idea for a great summer send off for our little shadow. Hey guys, what did I miss? Uh, come on, I gotta drive you home. The guys and I are gonna go to the dark side for a couple of beers. Well, let me come with you. I I'll just wait outside till you guys are done. Suit yourself. Hey, hey, I got shotgun. Go ahead. Guys. Guys! You better let him in. Guys! Come on. I'll get it. Thanks. Buy it. I'm gonna buy. Don't worry, you cheapskate. Hey, Joe. Huh? Joe Roberts, right? Yeah. How'd you know? I'm Larry. I work in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, I see you in there all the time, but I've never been in there. Yeah, I noticed. You're always out here. What's the deal? You could have one of the guys sneak you a beer if you want. Um, I don't drink. I just don't really care for it. Well, then, what's the deal here? I'm just waiting on the guys. We like to hang out. Really? Are you sure? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, it's just... Every time they get ready to leave, it's just... It's, uh, it's none of my business. I gotta get back to work. I'll see you around. I'm gonna be 18 pretty soon. Sounds good. All right, look. This is gonna be the greatest. 
says here in the newspaper that Hughes is here starting up some new highly secret business. So what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Look, we have two more weeks left in the summer, and you want to get shed of Joey, right? Of course. Of course. You said your dad did business with Hughes, right? Oh, sure. Now you believe me? This plan will get Joey out of her hair for the rest of the summer. It is genius, if I do say so myself. Spill it already. Can you get a piece of your dad's stationery? From the dealership? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. OK, well, here's what we'll do. We're going to write a letter from your dad. But we'll make sure it doesn't get back to him. Don't worry. And the letter is going to talk about how they were childhood friends and that your dad would consider it a personal favor if he would get Joey a job. What if Joey wonders why one of us isn't the lucky one? Well, you and I go back to school in two weeks, and David's about to start his new job at the car dealership. Joey almost has a month until he goes back. But why Vegas? He's got a job here. So let me speak slower so you guys will understand. Hughes is here buying property for some new business. OK. And he'll logically need people to help with that. Oh. So he'll have a better job but stay here. And since we're giving it to him, it'll make it look like we're all doing Joey a solid. Get that man a cigar. It's a wonder that the both of you actually graduated. All right, all right. So he's got the letter. Then what? Then we lay it on him that he should head to Vegas and hook up with Hughes. But no one sees Howard Hughes. That's not the point. He'll spend all the money he saved up over the summer traveling out there, and he won't get in. I know that. That's the joke. But maybe traveling two-thirds of the way across the country will make him realize that we don't want him hanging around anymore. And that's the point. And he's such a cheese eater. He'll buy it in a heartbeat. <laughs> He'll think it's one of his blessings from God. Wait, wait, guys. Are you sure you want to do this? I mean, he's going to blow all his money on this. It's got to be this. Can't can we just get him to call Howard Hughes? I mean, I think that's a funny prank. That sort of defeats the purpose of a fake letter. Right. The cool thing, my dad doesn't even know Howard Hughes. What? You said... I thought he was the putz of the group. Wait a second. My dad might not know Howard Hughes, but he's done business with him. That's my point. And are you going to get the stationery or what? Yeah, sure. I'll get it tonight. Guys, thank you so much for the Sunday. This is really great. I told you we'd all hang out today, man. What's the occasion? Since you're not going off to school in the fall, Joey, I have this great idea for you to make some big money. Yeah? Yeah. It'll involve a little bit of traveling, but it'll be worth it. I've already got that job at the hardware store and... Psh. That's small potatoes. Yeah, bogus compared to this. Give me the skinny. Did you read the paper yesterday? In that article about Howard Hughes? The billionaire guy? Yeah, apparently he's going to do some big things in Florida. It was in an article in the Sentinel yesterday. Show him, Bobby. And with these big things in Florida, he's going to need some help. And I'm thinking... Who better to help him out than you? Me? Why would Howard Hughes choose me? Why not you? First off, I, I don't even know this guy. And secondly, he's got people that he pays just to keep people away from him. That may be true. But those people that they keep away don't have what you have. Show him, David. <laughs> Dear Sonny, I hope this letter finds you well, and even more prosperous. I am doing well here in wait, Florida. Wait. Who's Sonny? Oh, that's what his close friends and relatives call him. But only them. I'm here in Florida, and looking forward to seeing you again. I miss the old neighborhood, and taking a spin on your motorized bike. Okay. Not that I'm not grateful. It's just, this letter is addressed to Howard Hughes. Yeah? So? I just don't think we should be reading other people's mail. It's not really mail. It's more like a private letter of introduction. Yeah, from David's dad to him, Howard Hughes. Well, 
This is still addressed to Mr. Howard Hughes. I don't think we should be reading it. All right, here's the dilemma. If, if we don't read it, then how are you gonna know what it says? Wait, David, did your dad say what was in this letter? Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you told me that it, it was a letter, you know, a letter talking about the antics that your dad and Hughes got into as kids back in Houston. Yeah, right. And he talked about a favor that Mr. Hughes owed your dad. A favor? Right. Isn't that cool? The richest man in America owes my dad. What? Well, he, he didn't exactly say, but it was just something that led Mr. Hughes to owe David's dad a favor. And since they're going to be in Florida for something, David's own man thought one of us should cash in. Well, mm -hmm. I only worked for Mr. White a couple times, and I helped him clean out the storage room. I guess he was impressed. And look, remember last week in church, Pastor talked about being ready to receive blessings from God? Sure. He said that if we remain obedient, that he will fulfill his promises. Okay. Well, then this is obviously one of those blessings. That's far out. But why would he choose me? Hmm. My dad is an old friend. And, uh... My dad and Howard Hughes... They grew up together. And... Well, the thing is... My dad and Howard Hughes went swimming one time. In this old abandoned quarry. Howie Hughes, Howie Hughes almost drowned. And my dad saved him. <laughs> and they remained friends ever since. That's the bomb. But I'm still a little confused. Why should I get this break? Uh, I got this. So since Howard Hughes is doing this big thing in Florida, David's for sure gonna be the manager at his dad's dealership. And Bobby and I are going off to college in the fall. You were the logical one to get it. Denny, can you give me a ride over to David's dad so I can thank him personally? No! Um, he's out of town. And that's why he gave me the letter to give to you. And um, he's, he's too busy to answer any phone calls with the type of work he's doing. And time is crucial. You have your savings, right? We should go ahead and get you packed and get you to the airport tonight. You don't want to miss out on this opportunity by being late, right? No, no, I would not. David, thank you so much. And your dad, thank him too. Denny, you too. Bobby, thank you so much. Oh, no, no, don't thank me. I had nothing to do with it. Don't be so modest, Bobbo. It was your idea for Joe to cash in. <laughs> well. Okay. It was all of our ideas. We need to get out of here. Don't worry about mom and dad. I've already talked to them about it. They support it 100%. And that's why they decided to go ahead and leave on their trip now. Are, are you sure they're not going to mind me missing my birthday? I doubt they'll even be back by then. And I'm sure Howard Hughes will put you right to work. And we'll celebrate when you get back. You turn 18 in just two weeks. a part of me that likes to hide from being low I go back to those places where I know I shouldn't go let me know if you need anything else I empty out my soul Wasted half my life away And in all those dark places That's not where I want to stay
Excuse me, son. Are you looking for a cab? Well, yes. Actually, that's what I was about to do. Would you like to share a ride? That would be perfect. I only brought $200, and that's supposed to last for the next three days. Well, I'm going to visit my daughter in Henderson, and is that in the same direction you're going? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to the Desert Inn to see Howard Hughes. Oh, well, that's downtown. I'm going the other direction. I'm sorry. I hope you have a great visit, though. Good luck on your journey. God bless you. Now oh, what? Son, did I hear you say this is your first time here? Uh, excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. Pastor Fred Rexroth. Hi, I'm Joe Roberts, and yes, I just got in from Florida. I wasn't eavesdropping, but I couldn't help hearing you talk about the taxi cab ride and your finances. Yes, sir? This is not the place to be when you're low on finances, especially for a man of God. How could you know? Oh, it shows, son. It shows. Well, to tell you the truth, I actually am low on funds. I've only got $200, and that's supposed to last me the next three days. And I take it you have a specific purpose, and it's not to win big at the blackjack tables. <laughs> no, sir. I'm here to see Howard Hughes. Really? Well, that's great. I'll pray for you. Thank you. If I might ask, what are you doing here? I'm usually looking out for lost souls leaving town. They're not hard to find. I guess that could be right. But I could see the love of God all over you. And I was curious when I heard you talking about your money. Well, I, I felt the Lord was directing me to you. Could you give me a ride? Well, no, but the next best thing. You see that line of cars over there? The ones that say, to the strip? Yes, sir. All those cars and station wagons are courtesy shuttles to the various hotels on the Strip. I see. Well, the hotel shuttles are free for guests. <laughs> I'm sure the Motel 6 doesn't have a shuttle. I thought you said the Desert Inn. For not eavesdropping, you sure did get a lot of information. Right, right. I'm sorry. But I am trying to help you out. The Desert Inn isn't running a shuttle today. But, Caesar's Palace is just down the street. You get it? So, are you saying that I take the shuttle down to Caesar's Palace and then walk down to the Desert Inn? But, what about being a guest? You see that really neat looking car? The one at the front of the line? The 46 Woody? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, that one's to Caesar's Palace. And that guy leaning on the front, he'll make an arrangement. Don't worry. Hello. I know. You need a ride. Well, yes, but I... You need to get Caesar's Palace. <laughs> Don't they all? <laughs> yes, but I just need you to... You need to get in first. Got any luggage? Just this one. You can take that on with you. <laughs> Great. Hey, no. Go to the passenger side. Got some other people coming. You are the shuttle to Caesar's Palace, right? You can read, can't you? <laughs> okay. Your reservation number? Uh, I don't have a reservation. <laughs> this shuttle's for guests at Caesar's Palace only. I need to get to Caesar's Palace because it's right across the street from the Desert Inn. Actually, it's right down the street, and their shuttle's not running today. <laughs> no matter, I, I don't have a reservation there either. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of casinos closer if all you're here for is to try for a fast win. Oh, no, it's... That's not it. Oh, you're here for something fast, all right. I've seen it all. Uh, not, not really. 
than what? Well, I'm here to see Howard Hughes. Well, this shuttle's for guests of Caesar's Palace only. Sheesh, where are you from, kid? Put ten bucks in the box and let's get going. <laughs> Good thing that's all your luggage. Yes, sir. Reservation? Got any luggage? They lost ours. They said they'd deliver it to the hotel later. Too bad. Good luck with that, though. I gotta turn around when I get to Caesars, so I'll drive through and pull through the DI. The Desert Inn? When I get there, you can hop out. Oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> when you need to get back to the airport, walk up to Caesars and come find me. I'm the one who drives this Woody. I'm... That's no problem. I'm going to be here for the next two days. <laughs> right. I'll be back from my next airport run in about a half hour. I'll see you then. No, but I'm seeing... I know. You're here to see Howard Hughes. Right. The pool's that way. Hi. How may I help you, sir? Uh, those elevators only go to the sixth floor. Yes, sir. The guest areas. Oh, but I've come to see Mr. Howard Hughes. I'm sorry, sir. You'll have to contact his office to make an appointment. <laughs> he owns this hotel, no? Yes, he does, but he has a staff that makes his appointments. And he leaves on the top floor, no? Yes, his company occupies the top three floors, which is why the guest elevators only go to the sixth floor. What about that elevator at the end of the hall? The one marked with the three. That elevator is a service elevator. I have a very important matter to discuss with him. I'm sure you do, but I can't. So, you will not contact him for me? I can't. I came all the way from Brazil, huh? Just to see him. I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do. Very well, then. God bless you. And God bless you, sir. Thanks. Hi, may I help you, sir? Yes. Um, I'm here to see Mr. Howard Hughes. You're here to see him? Yes. Well, we have a manager. Perhaps he can help. Let me ring uh, him. No. See... I'm here to see Mr. Howard Hughes specifically. I... The elevator down there by itself, the one all the way at the end of the hall, the one marked three, that's his elevator. It only stops at the seventh, eighth, and ninth floors. Take it all the way up to the ninth floor, that's the penthouse. It'll open into a waiting room. See Jody when you get there. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You've made me a bed. Lord, you are completely in control. Please guide my steps. Please open up Mr. Hughes' heart for the plan that you have for all of us. In your most precious son's name, amen. Hi. Um, 
I'm here to see Mr. Hughes. Your card. My card? Yes, your business card. Put it on the stack. Well, I don't have a card. No card? I have this letter. Wait here. Mr. Hughes will see you now. Is it alright if I leave my suitcase here? Uh, yes, of course. Joe! Is that you? Oh, come on in and sit. Hi, uh, Mr. Hughes. Th thank you so much for seeing me. I'm sorry, son, but I don't do that. Oh, sorry, sir. No need to apologize. It's just the atmosphere around here. Eh, the government's been blasting those atomic bombs, and, well, I just don't want to take a chance on getting radiation poisoning. That has nothing to do with you. I didn't know about that, sir. I wouldn't suppose you would. They've been blasting here for 15 years or more. You know, this hotel shakes when they blast underground. Wow. Yeah, they do experimental tests underground just 75 miles away from here. Go over to the window and take a look. So, go on. Yeah, now you see out beyond the buildings on the strip, those mountains? Oh, yes, sir. That's the Sheep Ridge Mountains. You see them? Yes, sir. Uh, they seem pretty far away. Far? <laughs> Just 20 miles on the other side of those mountains are where they're setting off nuclear bombs. What, sir? Nuclear bombs. You know, the thing we used to blast Hiroshima a hundred years back in time. Twin to war? Oh yeah, we learned about that in history class. Don't you have a bomb shelter back where you live? Oh, no. Uh, it's pretty peaceful in our little town. Well, more like naive, if you ask me. Now, go ahead and sit down. Sit down. Now, tell me, you're who now? I'm Joe Roberts, sir. Um, Joseph Roberts from Mound City, Florida. Mound City. Hmm. Mound City. Where exactly is that? It's about uh, 35 miles north of Orlando, but it's a thousand miles from the hustle and bustle there. <laughs> Sounds nice. Did I buy property there? Um, not that I know of, sir. Now, your letter of introduction is from a Carson White. Now tell me, how are you and he related? Oh, and call me Sonny. Not sir. I'm good friends with one of his sons, and um, I've also done some odd jobs here and there for Mr. White. A worker, are you? Uh, I'm not afraid of work, if that's what you mean. <laughs> well, good. I wasn't. The court's gotten me. The letter says that Carson used to live in my neighborhood in Houston, and that he enjoyed rides on my motorized bicycle. You know, I did put an engine on my bike when I was 12 years old. It was a big hit in the neighborhood with the kids. <laughs> and Dad was even going to make a business and start selling them. Eh, nothing ever came of it. And it goes on to say that uh, he and I would sneak onto the golf course at the Gusen Country Club. Now, I remember that, kind of. Well, we used to do that. I mean, Carson could have been one of the kids that I played with. Um, that's probably right.
Hey, you want some? Oh, no, sir, I'm fine. It's purified water. Mm. I put a $10,000 purification system in one of the rooms down the hall. When it gets clean, they just seal it up in these aluminum bottles. It's as pure as you can get it. Wow. That sounds like a great idea, sir. Idea? What? Bottled water? Huh. I guess I'll have to look into that. And it's sunny. Remember? You know, I usually have a pretty good memory. But, uh... I'm a little fuzzy on exactly who this Carson is, and what is it that he and I would be even about? Have you read this letter? Oh, uh, no, sir. It was addressed to you. <laughs> Honesty. I like that. You know, that's a rare commodity. You don't see that these days. Well, I, I can't be anything else, sir. Sonny. Well, it shows you were raised right. Well, he goes on to say that if I were to give you a job, that he would consider he and I even. You can imagine all the people I've met over these years, and you know what Carson is talking about is over 50 years ago. It's good to remember those times. I take it very seriously, the recommendations of childhood friends such as Carson. So, where are you staying? I just got here from the airport, and I'm still looking for a place to stay. <laughs> yeah, right then. Look, you take this downstairs, and uh, they'll get you a room. Sir, Sonny, this is for the Victorian suite. I only came here with $200. Um, I, I think I'll have to find some place cheaper. Hey, Joey, take that to the front desk, and they'll get you a room as my guest for as long as you stay. And there'll be no charge. I do own a hotel, you know. Well, thank you, sir. Sonny. We're going to do some great things together. Great things. All right, come back to Mark 9, and... And uh, we'll get started. Anything else you need, just see Jody out front. She'll take care of it. And as far as money is concerned, if you've got $200 in your pocket now, then when you get home, that's what you'll have. Your money's no good here in Vegas. Thank you so much, Mr. Hughes. Oh, sorry. Say, are there any more people in the outer lobby? It's full, sir. Well, tell Jody to send them all home. I'm not seeing any more people before I leave. Yes, sir. Sonny. Take this down to the front desk downstairs. Yes, ma'am. Well? Well, ma'am. Mr. Hughes said that he's not seeing any more visitors today. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you give me an outside long distance line, please? Okay. Thanks. You've reached Robert. We're not home at the moment. Please 
I'll just call him later. Yes. Can I get? Oh, can I get some steak and eggs? The eggs scrambled, and I would like the steak medium well. Very well, sir. Um, can I also have some breakfast potatoes and a short stack of pancakes? There you go. Thank you, sir. Is there anything else I can get for you, sir? It's perfect. Thank you so much. Oh man, I could get used to this. It's only two floors. Dunce, of course it's locked. Your instructions are in the envelope, and there's a book that Mr. Hughes would like you to take a look at that's in the package. Uh, Mr. Hughes definitely said that I have to see him this morning. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Hughes is not seeing anyone today. When do I... Joey, read over this stuff and take a look at the book. We'll talk tomorrow, same time. Sunny. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Sorry, meeting with my lawyers today. Take the envelope on the desk and I'll see you tomorrow. H.H. What? I've got an 8 o'clock flight in the morning. What gives? I know you were supposed to leave tomorrow, but we've got things to do. Here's an open-ended ticket back to Florida. Now, I don't own this airline, but I can afford it. Sonny. 
That is impressive. He knew I was going to leave tomorrow. Uh, hi, Mom and Dad. Uh, I'm, I have to stay a bit longer here in Vegas. Uh, don't worry, I'm doing fine. Tell Denny and the guys that they are responsible for everything. Um, I will get back with them when I can, whenever that might be. Alright, love you, bye. Hello? Mr. Roberts? Mr. Hughes would like to see you now. Oh, oh, okay, I'll be up there in 15 minutes. Is that okay? No. Please make it five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Hello? Uh, are you enjoying your stay? Yes, sir. It's been great. Sit. Sit. So, I trust you've had a chance to look over the book and the materials I had sent to you? Yes, sir. I've read the book. Very interesting stuff. I've heard a lot about those bands and things before, so... <laughs> you've read the entire book? What, you don't like the nightlife here? No, sir, I can't even get in legally for a few more days. <laughs> so, you strike me as a smart young man. I'm sure you've gathered by now that rock and roll has something to do with what I've planned, correct? Yes, um, I've gathered that. I love rock and roll, by the way. <laughs> well, I thought you might. I have a chance to get on the ground floor of an opportunity that I believe will go gangbusters in this country. Now, they got something like this in England, but here in America, this will be big. What exactly is it? Well, I call it... Uh, rock on Diner. Hey, rock and roll music is big and it's just gonna keep getting bigger. I want to have a combination eating place and museum. Hey, my guys tell me that a free museum that serves food oh, will make a killing. That sounds great, but what would you want me to do? Me? You're going to run the place. Me? But, sir, you don't even. You know, I've been watching you this past few days. Not spying on you or anything like that. I mean, we, we don't have cameras in our rooms. But I've been watching you. Uh, it ain't your young age that keeps you on the straight and narrow. And instead of going out on the town the last two nights, you've stayed in your room and you've studied. You had the power to blow my money all over Vegas. And all you could manage was... <laughs> Steak and eggs for 44 bucks. <laughs> now look. You take these tickets and uh, these checks. And this cash. Now take all this and uh, spend a couple of weeks and get those items on my list. And we're going to need all that stuff and more to get our first place opened. This is a, a lot of money. What are we buying? History. History, Joey. I've already been collecting some things, but 
you get to get the good stuff. Well, it would be my pleasure, sir. Uh, Sonny. When you get back, I'll have further instructions. Some of these places are within driving distance, but I'm not old enough to run a car. Uh, I think Jody's got a nice Chevy, I think, something like that. Just use hers. She never does. Really? Yeah. Oh, by the way, she lives on your floor. Oh, I see. Um, Sonny, do you want me to check in with you at least? No need. I trust you. I'm not going to be here anyway. I'm leaving Vegas for good. Where are you going, if I might ask? You certainly can. I bought a nice hotel down in Nicaragua. It's on a lake down there. I want to check that out. You'll be all right. You'll be fine. You'll be just fine. Thanks. But I didn't see him call you. Oh, no problem. We spoke about it this morning. You talked about his plans? For me? Someone's plans for you. Can I ask you something? Yes, sir. I'm only going to be 18 on my birthday. Which is next week? Well, why is he doing all of this for me? Well, that depends on who you think he is. Mr. Hughes? <laughs> and? Really? You think this is his plan? I've known Mr. Hughes for a long time. He doesn't move forward in a project unless he's confident. He's confident in you. Well. Surely he knows the letter. It's not about the letter. It was the favor that he sees on your life. Don't you see it? I've always thought I had it. Well, now you know. Well, thanks. I'll, I'll keep in touch. I'll be here. Where is your car, by the way? I just call down to the bellhop. They'll have it ready when you go downstairs. And when do you need it back? Whenever you're done. <laughs> I don't drive it anyway. You need to get these things as soon as you can. Inspect them and ship them to the address in Orlando. They're all paid for, as is the shipping. We've not been able to make contact on the last three items, so you'll have to make deals for them. Contact Jody when you need money. You've got a blank check. We're making history, Joe. Sonny. I'll be right there. Hi. What can I do for you? My Aunt Jody asked me to bring this to you and add these three things to your list. I don't know what list, though. Oh, I know what list. I hoped you would. Well, thanks. God bless you. Well, thanks again. Let me be a vessel only to be filled with you. To be filled with you. Let me be a vessel empty, let me be a vessel only to be used by you, 
to be used by you and I am just flesh I am nothing left I'm broken and is I am way? so weak I am so frail so I give you all that I have left and I say glorify Joe Roberts, I talked to your wife about the... Yeah, man, stuff. I've been waiting for you. Come on in. Nice car. Oh, thanks. Uh, that is a 62 Impala. Cool. So where'd you fly into? Sacramento? No, sir. Actually, uh, I drove here from Vegas. Uh, that's where I'm, I'm working right now. You drove 10 hours for this? And you got 10 back? Mr. Hughes, he's, he's very particular. It's a good thing you came early. Some of the guys from the old van are getting back together, record one of my songs, and I said I'd help out with the vocals. The Flying Burrito Brothers? Yeah, that's right. I'm impressed. Want some coffee? Oh, no thanks. Sure you don't want a cup of coffee. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm fine. Um, actually, uh, a, a glass of water, if you have it. Yeah, we got to run a water and indoor plumbing <laughs> and all here. Yes, sir. You know, it's still kind of hard for me to wrap my mind around all this. These gold records and all. I'm just a plain country boy from Kansas. Hey, you want to hear something I've been working on? Sure. You're not in a hurry, are you? Uh, not if you're not. It's kind of different for me. It's a throwback to some old rock and roll stuff. Cares and I had no strife. It was the music that moved me. It was the music that moved me. It was the music that moved me. Want to give it a try? Could I? As I grew and started out on my own, not quite little and not yet grown. 
was the music that moved me. It was the music that moved me. It was the music that moved me. It was all my own. Elvis, buddy. Well, I gotta tell you. There's two guys from England who are starting up a place called the Hard Right Cafe over there in London. They offered me twice what you got here. Uh, I was I was not aware of that. Yep, they did. Well, uh, would you like me to make a call? Hey, sit down. I'm an American through and through. I wouldn't have that anywhere else but right here in the good old USA. Here's a little bonus for you. You can find a place for it, right? But, but this is, this is Mr. Tambourine Man. I, I, I can't. They sent me to him. Oh, cool. Fine. Hi, uh, may I speak to Dennis Roberts, please? Not here. How about Bobby Parker, then? Nope, not here. He has invited us to he sounded like I must have been bothered. Dear Lord, thank you for the favor today. Oh, <laughs> and thank you for Mr. Clark not knowing that the guys from the Hard Rock are actually Americans. Lord, please take care of Denny, whatever is going on. In your most precious son's name, I pray. Amen. Before you ask, he's not here, but he left you this. He's gone to Nicaragua? Uh, he went to the Intercontinental Hotel for an extended stay. That's all he's told us. Thanks. Can I ask you a question this time? Well, that's a switch. What you've been doing, has it been hard? No, it hasn't been hard per se. It's, it's just been different. Mm. But you've been able to manage it. Yeah. So being 18, it's not a problem? No, it, it hasn't been a problem at all. Well, you do seem more confident than the last time I saw you. Thanks, and thank you so much for all your help. That car of yours, by the way, is to the max. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, and he left you his private number. It's in the envelope. Thanks. What do I get if I give my life? To the brightest light And what do I get If I give my love 
to this Lord above. It only has 30,000 miles on it. That you speak this of. This is a great price. Are you sure on the mile? What do I Let's get you signed up today. in return? I'm sure you'll love it. Well, brother, I can only tell you what I've learned. You get light from the brightest light. And you get love from the deepest love. And you get shine for the very first time. Like the fireflies that dance at sunset. That's what you get. What if I don't deserve okay. that grace that warms your face? Oh, and what if I hurt no, all those no, that no, tried no, to no, show me a light? I heard your perfect God forgives Well, brother, I can only tell you how I live I get light from the brightest light And I get love from the deepest love And I get the shine for the very first time Fireflies that dance at sunset That's what I get Take all of me Let me be the man that you want me to be Maybe Joey actually got a job out in Vegas. From Howard Hughes? You don't. Nobody gets a job with Howard Hughes. I bet he didn't even get in. And how do you know he's going to be OK? He called my folks the other day and left a message. And he said he had a job? Not in so many words, but why else would he still be out there? What'd the message say? That he would be home sometime soon. And now that I think about it, he said that we were all responsible for him being out there. So he is mad. No, I don't, I don't think so. Well, maybe. I'm sure he'll be glad to help you out. He idolizes you so much. Now that I think about the message, he'll let me know. Who knows if he'll even come back? He knows what we did for sure. I told you guys! Don't try to weasel out now. Too bad your parents chose now to take their round the world trip. So what you gonna do for two more weeks with no moolah? Too bad your old man chose now to fire your sorry behind. Hey, if you guys were pulling a prank on me, I'd save up enough money to buy a gun and shoot you both. What the heck are you talking about? You were just as much a part of this as we are. The heck I was. It was both of you. In fact, it was mostly David. Hey! I'm not taking the rap for this. You guys did this. It's your guys' fault. <laughs> You're right. Denny, you hatched this plan. Joey would be here now waiting on us hand and foot if you had just let him be. If you had just told me you couldn't get your dad stationary, we wouldn't have even written the letter. How about you two girls leave? You're lucky I'm still hobbling around on this thing. Hey, 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 I, I think you guys ought to head on out. Yeah, because I'm sitting here shaking. Hey, Larry, one more. Yeah, let's get out of here. Where to? Let's go back to my place. We got to figure something out. And when you catch up with your little brother, send him my way. I'll straighten him out. Las Vegas by now. We tried to reach Denny at a 
his rat house, but they said he wasn't there. Anyway, your mother and I are taking a two-week overland tour of the Holy Land. So that'll mean we'll be home in a month instead of two weeks from now. Try to get word to your brother, will you? Mom and I send her love. Bye now. Great. Another month with no money? <sighs> okay. You guys can not anymore. I'm coming home and I'm going to square things with you all. Be ready. <laughs> What now? He's definitely mad. I don't know. What are you gonna do about this? How the heck should I know? He didn't even say when he'd be back. Well, you better find out soon. Why do you keep saying me? This was this was all of us. If it was all of us, we better warn David. Deck creeps on his own. I think I'm just gonna head home. I wanna run deep into your presence. This is on you guys. I wanna tell Joe everything. Eyes are melted down, and you are all I want to be. I want to run fast into your compassion, where your grace will set me free, and my heart will know your mercy, and your love will rule in me. I want to run, 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 and not grow weary. I want to. strength I want to run I want to run I want to run deep into your presence until there's nothing left of me somebody's eyes are melted down you are all I want to be I want to run fast into your compassion where your grace will set me free Hey, Jen. What are you doing here? Uh, Joey, I haven't seen you all summer. If I told you everything I've been doing, you wouldn't believe me. So, what are you doing here? I just dropped my mom off. She's on her way to Chicago to go visit my grandmother. Well, what are you doing here? That's actually a part of my story, which it takes a while. It's a pretty long story, and I have to go get a cab. My car is right over there. I can give you a ride home. Thanks, Jen. You know what? That'll give us enough time for me to tell you everything that's happened. That's pretty amazing to have such an awesome job, and you're so young. Everyone I talked to didn't even mention that. I guess they just thought I was on a mission to do something big. Well, everybody around here was wondering what you were doing. Especially after what happened to Danny. What happened to him? You don't know? No! What happened to him? He got injured in an inter-squad game at FSU. He had a scholarship! I think once he got injured, he lost the scholarship. That's right. It was a provisional scholarship. Is he doing okay? I guess. I've seen him around the dark side bar. He had a cast on his leg and he was walking with a crutch. Dang. And since you didn't know about Denny, I'm assuming you don't know about his buddies either? What happened to them? Apparently his buddy Bobby Parker's tuition check bounced and they kicked him out too. So they're both home? I gotta get to them. That David White? He got fired by his own dad. Fired? He's, he was gonna be manager. I don't like to gossip, but I know this for a fact because it happened to my neighbor, Mrs. Hamilton. Apparently, he sold her a car, a used car, and told her it had 30,000 miles on it, when in fact it had 130,000. I'm surprised you didn't know any of this. Yeah, I just... I've been so busy with my job for Mr. Hughes that, you know, I've only gotten a few chances to call Denny. 
I wonder why they didn't tell me that he had left when I called the frat house. Well, what did they say? They told me he wasn't there, which I guess is a true statement. I wish I had known about this so I could have done something. Well, it sounds like you still can, what with your new job and all. You're right. Mr. Hughes said I could hire whoever I wanted to. I didn't think about Denny or Bobby or David because I thought they had everything figured out. I guess God knew about everything, so, you know, I didn't have to. God is good. The guys did me a favor. Now I'll be able to return it. Do you want me to drop you off at your house? No. Draw me off the dark side. I tried to call Denny from the airport at the, at the house, but he didn't answer. Hey, thanks a lot. Hey, why don't you come work for me? There's plenty to do. Hey Joe, finally legal now, huh? Yeah. Um, have you seen my brother and his... David? David. Your brother's back, and he's looking for us. What? Your brother, he's back. He came into the dark side and chased me into the john. I barely made it out the window. I, I think he's headed to your place. Thanks a lot, Mr. Naylor. Hey, 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 does he have a, does he have a gun? Dave? Dave? Danny, stop. This is stupid for us to be playing around. It was it was David's idea. I didn't I didn't want to do it. What was David's idea? All of it. The letter? Yes, it was all him. I don't believe you for one minute. You all are responsible and you all be rewarded. Rewarded? Now that we're both back home and I have free reign, I have my choice of the general manager of the first rock on diner. Howard Hughes is opening up a chain of them. We're in on the ground floor. Denny, we're gonna be rich. And it's all because of that letter. I hope that you can forgive me for not staying in touch with you. I really wish I had known about your accident. Can you forgive me? It was a joke. A very bad joke. Forgiveness. Is no joke.
Hey, Joe. You know, you've been coming in here for a year, and you're always alone. What, what gives? I just like remembering. Oh, yeah? And you always order ginger ale. What's up with that? I don't really drink. I am sorry about your business, but I'm not really sorry that I got the other guys to stop drinking. You have had a big influence on them. So your business is doing good, huh? Yeah, it actually couldn't even be better. You have done good for yourself. Didn't you just graduate like last May? It's been such a blessing. The school has been so cooperative with me getting the business up and running. They should give you extra credit. <laughs> actually, they did. They gave me six hours of coursework towards my diploma. I am sure glad your business is down in Orlando and not here in Mound City. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Sure. Well, I know it's none of my business, but, you know, being here, I hear things. I'm sure you do. And, you know, when you first came back, you were so busy setting up your business, and you were just kind of oblivious to everything. Oblivious? Yeah. You know, now, I know it all worked out for your brother and his friends, but the thing they did, it was just plain mean. You mean the fake letter? You knew the letter was fake? Pretty much as soon as I met Mr. Hughes. I knew God had a plan for me, and it was my job to walk it out. For me and for all of us. But what about all the bad stuff that could have gone wrong? As I was walking it out, you know, I realized that I was the one who was supposed to go in front for my family, for all of us. So you knew the letter was fake, and you went through all of this. When did you forgive them? The first night in that hotel room. I, w I wasn't really sure what was going to happen. I, I didn't really know how things were going to end up, but I knew it was all part of God's plan, and I was where he wanted me to be. So, you know, I went ahead and forgave them. Well, they sure lucked out with your forgiveness. I was the one who got all the benefits. I got a great job, I was able to help my brother, and I got a great girlfriend. It, it was all planned out, and I was the one who got all the benefit. You know, when you put it that way, I can see that the person doing the forgiving does get all the benefits. You sure did get that right, Larry. I guess it is true that 90% of what bartenders dispense is wisdom. Well, I'd sure like to have some of your wisdom. Where'd you say that church was of yours anyway? Why do I try to make sense of what I'll never fully understand? Got to remind myself to dwell on what I know I've been given. I'm forgiven. And everything I'll ever go through is not the end, it's what you use to bring me back to you. As far as the east is from. It's not the end in 
Christ, greater things I will do. 